Hey everyone, this is Brian Moore from PM Square coming at you with another planning analytics tutorial. If you like what you see, be sure and find me on LinkedIn where my URL is brianpm2. Happy to connect with you over there and answer any additional questions you may have. Let's jump into it. Today's lesson is on the new waterfall visualizations. Now, waterfalls have been requested by many a customer and IBM listens. They uh, brought it into the PAW 57 release which we're referring to as uh, PAW, and any previous releases will henceforth be known as PAW Classic. Uh, so in the 57 release here in my local environment, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a visualization from scratch. And this is a new feature in 57 as well, that we are able to go ahead and select a visualization and then build it from a template as opposed to starting from an exploration and converting. This is very helpful because uh, in the past in PAW Classic, uh, we would have to orient our rows and columns and hope that the right visualization would be available based on the orientation we chose. Here, when we start from a template, we have a better chance of uh, building the visualization that we are going for. So it gives us an easy layout to follow. We just uh, drag and drop in the dimensions. So we can see there's uh, a total of 25 visualizations to choose from and that we have selected waterfall. So to build this out, I'm gonna start in the uh, Bacon 2020 uh, data set, and I'm gonna be working off of the sales cube. And so I can go ahead and expand the dimensions and drag and drop in uh, each of the items from my dimensions. So I'm gonna start from uh, periods and I'll go ahead and grab a predefined subset of 2019 quarters. That's gonna serve as my X axis. And over on my Y axis, I'm gonna jump into the measures dimension and we'll just go ahead and select quantity. You're only gonna want one single item in the Y axis to uh, work out on your waterfall. So here we have quantity uh, showing up on the Y axis there and the four quarters showing up across the X and then a sum total at the end for your basic waterfall. We can see that Q1 units uh, were a lot higher than the rest. Let's continue to build it out from here. And we see that we have a subcategory, so we can add a little bit more detail into this visualization. And for my subcategory, I'm gonna choose regions. And I have another predefined subset of the region summary. And that just has my subcontinent level. Now I can see the quarters broken out a lot more into detail. And I can see Central Europe seems to have performed better, more, moved more units than the rest. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So I'm gonna remove that hierarchy. And next we're going to use the repeat column and repeat rows. And the reason I removed the subcategory is that this is gonna get very large and so I need the space. Uh, the repeat column and repeat row fields are available on all 25 visualizations. So it'd be good to get acquainted with them now, see what they do. And so what they do is just multiply your visualization. And so we'll go ahead and pick out my predefined product subset, which is gonna be the product summary. And I'll put that over onto columns. And I will also go to customers and I'll choose my predefined subset there, which is department summary. And I can see that uh, my visualization is now nine little visualizations. And so we have, uh, Nine different waterfalls, all broken up, uh, golf shop, department store, and marketing uh, per my customer type, and then my product types going across the top. Uh, so good to be able to display a lot of different visualizations at, at once and uh, give, the, give the end user a big cross-section of data to view. So that is the basics of uh, a unit-based waterfall. Now, the more common example I'm gonna show you is the financial example of where we are going to uh, put in like a PL and see how we go from gross to net. And so for that example, I have uh, cubes in the 24 retail. I'm gonna use my income statement cube and we'll go ahead and choose uh, the waterfall again from the visualizations. Get my template out there. I'll go back to the server and from income statement, I'm going to find my accounts. And so in my accounts, I have a subset, which is PNL WF for waterfall. 
And let's drag and drop that up into the X axis. Now I should also note that when I drag the dimension from the uh, from within a cube, it automatically attaches that cube to the visualization. So I can't pull from the dimension list. I need to pull dimensions from within their proper cube so that it knows to connect properly there. Uh, next, I'll go ahead and choose a year. And so let's choose uh, year members 2019 or year one. Again, you can only choose one element for the Y axis. And here I have gross revenue and then all of the expenses and eventually a sum total. Now, this is how most systems I've come across are set up in that we take advantage of uh, loading all data as positive and then we use weighting to net uh, our subtotals like gross margin and net profit. Unfortunately, this does not work for our waterfall example here. So our waterfall example typically shows uh, a large positive and then the subtractions that bring us down to the net amount. So in order to take advantage of that, you might need special dimensions or a special cube uh, and or load your data differently from how we normally do it, unfortunately. So for this example, I have created a special uh, version called Actual Waterfall 1. And so when I sec select Actual Waterfall 1, this data has been loaded with uh, expenses as negative and that better highlights our example here for the waterfall. Start off with a gross revenue of 90,000 or 90 million, and then eventually back into a sum to get the net income. Additional challenge I encountered was with the weighting of the accounts as well. So definitely something to take in consideration if you wanna build the classical financial waterfall there. That just about wraps it up for today's tutorial. And uh, one more item to show you is in IBM's Knowledge Center, we can see great descriptions across all of these visualizations uh, in the Using Planning Analytics uh, web page. So we see all 25 um, particular visualizations, and we can click on those to get help. Hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. Be sure and like and subscribe us on YouTube at PM Square, and happy to see you next time. Thanks.